Welcome back everyone. In the previous videos I have been using this erosion node for quite a bit but I have not really explained the effect of the erosion. So today let's have a deeper look at the erosion of World Blender. So here I have a simple landscape. It's just a chip displacement and a warp landscape. So let's drop in the erosion. So here is the erosion node. It's not running at the moment because it's already turned off by default. The erosion node is actually a combination of four different modules. The water module, the wear expansion module, the rock break module, and the wind erosion module. So first, let me just turn off the other three and leave just the water. Let me open Krita and show you what the uh, water does. So suppose you have a mountain like this and the rain will fall on top of uh, the mountain like this and the water will flow down the mountain into this valley all right so while the water is running down the mountain it's gonna erode the rock and as you might have guessed the more water there is the more eroded the rock will be so the water up here will go all the way down here to this valley and so is the water here it's gonna go all the way down so you see the lower the valley the more water there will be and the more eroded it will be so after some time the mountain will become something like this on top of the mountain like this point it's not gonna be too eroded and down here it's gonna be eroded a lot and it's gonna make a very deep cut into the, the mountain. So here let me configure this erosion node to show you the effect of the water. So let me get rid of the rock hardness as well and since uh, the dirt is gonna be protecting the mountain I'm going to get rid of the dirt as well. It's this uh, debris expansion parameter. So when the water cut into the mountain it does not generate any dirt. Okay and uh, let's get rid of the evaporation of the water so all the water will remain in effect okay so let's leave everything else as default and turn on the erosion okay after a few seconds the erosion is finished and as you can see the water is cutting into the mountain like that and let me go to the shader editor and let me visualize the flow of the water there we go. So you see, the more water there is, the more eroded it will be and the deeper the cut. So that's the effect of the water without the, the dirt. Now let me turn back on the dirt and see how it protects the rock. There we go. So the dirt is going to protect the rock from being eroded by the water. And only the parts of the rock that is uh, exposed to the water will get eroded. And also, while the dirt is flowing down the mountain, it's going to protect the rock along the way. So there should be a little bit less erosion on these rocks. So let's see the render. Okay. So you see, you don't see a lot of deep cuts because uh, when the water cut into the rock, it's going to create the dirt. And the dirt will then protect the rock from being eroded. So you generally will see a little bit less erosion by increasing the amount of dirt or debris. Anyway, let's decrease the erosive power to 0 0.5 and let's wait. Okay, so now we can see a lot more rocks and see the effects of the water. Okay, so you see the debris is uh, protecting the rock and force the water to spread out instead of going into the creases. Right. Now let's talk about the amount of water itself. So let's go back to Krita. Suppose we have a valley like this. And down here we have a bit of dirt. All right. And this dirt is going to protect the mountain below it this region right so this region will not be eroded when the water go down the mountain it's gonna meet with the dirt here and it's gonna spread out so this region is gonna be eroded and the more water there is the more spread out it will be and it's gonna erode a larger area 
However, because of this, it's going to be very hard to predict the amount of dirt that will be produced by the water. So I have made some adjustment to the erosion engine so that uh, the amount of water will simply control the spread instead of uh, the amount of dirt. It's go going to balance the amount of dirt no matter what. So even if you increase or decrease the amount of water, the amount of dirt will stay the same somewhat. And the the only thing that change is the uh, basically the uh, the spread of the water. So let's have a look at the flow map currently. The water kind of uh, go into the uh, valleys like that. But let's increase the water to something extreme. Let's say 50. Now there will be a lot of water and it's going to fill up these valleys. So you see the water is spreading pretty much everywhere like that. And as you can see, the amount of dirt is pretty much the same. The erosion will be a little bit different. The cracks, I mean, the cuts will be a little bit bigger. And that's it. So basically, the amount of water will control the spread of the water. And it will create some pool of water if you generate this uh, water. Let's turn this on and see the water layer. So you see the water is all over the place, but uh, the amount of dirt is pretty much the same and the cuts may be a little bit uh, bigger because uh, the water kind of spread all over the place. So there is bound to be a little bigger cut like that. Now there is this uh, water spread parameter. So let's go back to Krita. The water spread parameter control the how how the water kind of spread from the high point to the low point, right? Suppose we have a mountain like this, right? And we have a drop of water on top of the mountain. So which way will this drop of water go? By default, if you set the water spread to zero, it's going to go down to the lower part like that. But if you set the water spread to one, then the water drop here will be split. One part will go to this point and a bigger part will go to this point like that. So by default, it's uh, 0 0.01, which means pretty much no spread at all. And the water will simply go from the high point to the lowest point beside it. All right. And if we set this to 1, the water will spread from the high point to all the nearby lower points. So you see the flow kind of spread out like that, right? Normally, it's uh, it will simply go down like that. But now it's spread out because there are multiple low points beside a current point of uh, interest. And we have the evaporation rate which will remove the water over time. And this debris carrying capacity is the amount of dirt that will be carried away by the water. And this parameter, the debris loss, will remove the debris from the, the entire landscape. Right? This uh, will simply carry the debris from one point to the other while this will carry the debris outside the landscape. Debris protect rocks. This is the protection power of the debris. If you set this to zero, then the water will ignore the uh, the debris or the dirt and simply erode the rock underneath. And we also have the rock hardness. The rock hardness is like a reverse mask. If you increase this to one, then the rock will resist 100% of the erosive power. The water will not erode the rock at all and simply carry the debris away. All right, so that's how the water erode the rocks. But uh, the water is not the only thing that erode the rocks, right? So let's go back to Krita and erase everything. So you have a cliff like this, right? Sometimes the rock will be broken down because of the hot and cold cycles of the days and the debris will simply roll down the, the mountain to the, the foot of the mountain like that. And over time, it's going to create a layer of debris like this. And that is the effect of this rock break parameter. All right, here I set the debris carrying capacity to zero as well as the, the erosive power to zero. And this way, the water will not affect the, the landscape whatsoever. All right, let's set the rock break to 0 0.02. So you see the rock is breaking down by itself. And let's see. So as you can see, we have some very flat debris going down like that. 
This is the effect of the rock breaking down by itself and fall down the cliff, I mean fall down the mountain to the valley, all right? And this angle, this angle is the debris rest angle here. You can set this to 45 degrees to have the debris kind of stand up on the wall like that. Okay, so that's how the rock break work. Next is the wear expansion. This wear expansion is not a physically correct kind of thing. It's more like a cheat. So let's say we have a deep cut like this, right? The wear expansion will force this cut to expand outward over time. So normally the cut will be like this, but after like a, a hundred cycles, it's going to become like this. So it's just to uh, force the, the cut to be bigger and wider over time. And that's it. So let me increase this uh, wear expansion to let's say one. There we go. It forced the cut to expand outward and create a lot more dirt or debris. All right, finally, we have this wind erosion parameter. So let's go back to Krita and let me explain the effect of the wind erosion. So let's say we have a mountain like this and the wind will blow against this mountain like that and it's going to be directed up and then down like this. So this point is the weakest point and it will be the most eroded by the wind. So over time it will be softened down like that. And this whole bunch of rock will become debris and roll down the mountain. So basically the wind erosion will soften the sharp edges of the mountain and that's it. So let me turn this up to 0.1 and turn on the erosion. So you see this top of the mountain is a little bit softer and let's render and as you can see we have a little bit of debris or dirt whatever you want to call it and let's see the wear channel so you see the sharper parts of the mountain was eroded a lot more than the let's say the valleys and let me go back to the geometry node and increase this wind erosion all the way to one and let's see so you see it's uh, kind of uh, softened the the top of the mountain like that and let's have a look at the amount of debris that it created there we go so we have quite a bit of debris down here and the next thing we have is the erode iterations and by default it's 16 iteration so let's say we have a landscape here and 16 iteration will guarantee that the water can travel from one side of the landscape to the other and if you double it to 32 then the water can travel from one side to the to the other and then back and if you set it to 8 iteration then the water can travel a maximum distance of half a landscape so if you want to erode the landscape a lot more then you can increase these iterations to basically just prolong the simulation and force the water to run a lot more. And the rest iteration is similar to the erode iteration parameter, but the only thing different is that it does not erode the rock. It will simply uh, simulate the flow of the water and the debris sliding down the mountain, and that's it. So if you turn off this to uh, zero, then you might see a lot of uh, debris kind of stick on the slope of the mountain and if you want uh, the debris to just slide all the way down to the foot of the mountain then you can increase this uh, rest iteration to let the water as well as the uh, dirt to settle down and we have this slope factor basically it will simply take the angle of the slope into consideration if you turn it off then the uh, water will erode no matter the slope and if you turn it on then the water will not erode the flat surface like this or the vertical surface like this and the 45 degree surface like this will have the most erosion. You can actually turn this off to get a slightly different result but uh, personally I find uh, turning it on will produce a slightly better result. I don't know. Okay that's it. I hope you find this video useful. If you just started out you might not be able to predict the, sh the shape of the mountain after the erosion but over time you can kind of feel the effects of these parameters and effectively 
predict the uh, the shape of the mountain after erosion and you can create mountains like nobody's business next time i will talk about this hydro simulation okay stay tuned i'll see you next time